Uh, we've broken a lot of things on this channel. Uh, general out-of-bounds shenanigans, circumventing obstacles that would otherwise impede a traveler-only playthrough, pushing past the Paimon barrier to explore strange lands beyond the map's confines. In this video, we're adding another to the list. Welcome to Nilu's World, a small portion of the Sumeru Archon Quest where you're given a C3 trial Nilu and nothing to fight. Not only because you're just meant to move her from point A to point B to progress the quest, but because this world is completely empty. And I'm not kidding. There is nothing in this world. Even the map is devoid of all markers and icons. There is only Nilu, which makes it a perfect world. Well, okay, I guess there are a few other people in Sumeru City. You might think, and rightfully so, that this means there is nothing to see in this world. But uh, that's just it. Uh, because there is nothing, uh, there is plenty to see. Not making sense? Uh, take a look. I believe what's on screen now will explain everything. Uh, that is Storm Terror's lair. Notice anything different? Uh, because everything is missing, so too are the wind effects around the tower. Now I know what you're thinking, does that mean we can go below it? Nilu will be our guide as we seek such answers. But let's first get a feel for this vast, empty world. Uh, the thing I want to know is if either of the two remaining objects I've seen, other than chairs, uh, can be interacted with. Uh, those being... Teleport waypoints, nope, can't interact. And Statues of the Seven, also cannot interact. For the record, trees can be hit, but produce no wood. And bushes can be destroyed, but grant no items. Originally, I pushed northwest from Sumeru in a quest to reach Fontaine. But then I hit a teleport barrier. It sent me to the game's starting point. How oh, intriguing. My best guess is that this beach is the final fallback on a long list of teleport locations. Statues of the Seven and teleport waypoints may be visible, uh, but as they're not displayed on the map, I don't think they're being considered by the game when deciding where to place the player. Now, I actually think said list is entirely empty, except for this location. Uh, because, as we've established, there is nothing in this world. And so anyways, uh, that's how I ended up in Mondstadt of all places, and why this video is going to be about exploring Nilu's Mondstadt. Uh, we may as well begin with the city. Wait a minute. Something's not right. Uh, where are those big spinny things? Uh, you know, uh, the literal symbols of the city. The windmills. No. Oh. They've been reduced to doors. This, uh, well, uh, this is unexpected. I could see the sails having been unloaded, uh, because they are the part that spins. Yet, uh, the entire structure is gone. Uh, weird that the door is separate. I guess they slapped that on after placing the structure. Uh, Mondstadt is a ghost town. Uh, the ever stern Wagner and the rhythmic ding of his hammer is gone. No Catherine works at the desk of the Adventurer's Guild. Buildings, like the Angel's Chair, cannot be entered. Uh, the shops are... Nope. Wait. <laughs> this one is staffed. I'd shop there. Though there are many chairs and benches to sit on throughout the town, uh, the option to sit atop the Statue of Barbatos has been removed. Uh, let us turn our attention northwest towards Storm Terror's lair. And if you're curious, since it happens to be along the way, uh, the sword in Mr. Wolf's arena is missing. Maybe you've noticed something else odd about the area. If so, consider it a hint for what's to come. Uh, but now, Storm Terror's lair. Nilu obviously believes simply removing the stormy weather and crazy tornadoes uh, wasn't enough tranquility because the wind barrier and numerous wind currents around the tower are gone. We're able to see the ruins unobstructed. Not only that, we can walk through the front door.
So that's what's below the tower. I expected it to be a hole in the map. Ah, right. No wind currents. Uh, let me just climb up. Huh. Uh, the top looks a bit odd. Is that what it looks like before the Archon Quest? <sighs> nope. This is something new. Uh, that smoke effect. Is it possible the smoke is part of the main seal that goes here? And that the seal is unloaded, but the effect is not? Uh, the portion of floating above supports this conclusion, but... Hmm... Well, oh, let's carry on. From the very top, a Fontaine's existence can be confirmed. Should I find a way in, I'll be sure to showcase it in a future video. Uh, there's nothing off about the Dawn Winery. The same cannot be said for the neighboring village of Springvale. Uh, just like Mondstadt City, the windmill, the village's most defining feature, is gone. Uh, that's one way of making this map fair for Windtrace. Not that I ever considered camping atop it as a rogue and then hopping off with invisibility to be unfair. Nope, uh, not at all. Uh, moving to East Mondstadt, oh, we have the Thousand Winds Temple. I'm gonna take a guess that the gates... Uh, yep, no gates. If you ever wondered what was behind them, I'm sorry to say that it leads to a dead end at the bottom of the ramp. Oh, wow. An invisible wall. So that's how they fixed it. Back in version 1.0, you used to be able to walk around the gate that was here and get inside. Since we're nearby, let's drop in on another boss. The Cryo Regis Vine. Unsurprisingly, the boss isn't there. And once again, just like with Mr. Wolf, something about the area is a little off. Dada Upa Gorge's giant cooking pot, another case of a missing object. Beginning to think, we'll not find any remaining objects. On that note, there are two of note, even farther east in Mondstadt. First, the uncharted Windy Island. It's normally not bright and sunny here, but it is in Nilu's world. The object that's at the center of the island is, of course, missing. As an aside, since I probably won't ever find another chance to talk about this island, uh, did you know there's a chamber beneath it? I was recently reached out to on Twitter, uh, which reminded me of this. I explored it a very long time ago. As you can see, Klee isn't even level 90. A very long time, indeed. Hmm, I'm stuck here, aren't I? Uh, not like I can teleport out. I suppose this is a good chance to see what happens if the character drowns. Yo, oh, back to the game starting point. Not even where I was last standing. I think that absolutely confirms my suspicion that the teleport priority list, like everything else in this Tavat, is empty. And finally, uh, the last island that houses the Abyss. Uh, with everything being gone, I suppose that also means uh, the Abyss is gone. Or not. Why is the Abyss entrance uh, the only object I've come across? Hmm. Well, there were domains. I guess that explains it. If domains remain, it uh, makes sense that the Abyss also would. Whew, uh, we've covered a lot, haven't we? Uh, yet... There's one more place to visit. As they say, save the best for last.
a dragon spine without weather or sheer cold. It's amazing what a simple change in atmosphere can do. As one of my favorite locations in the game, seeing the mountain in a literal new light has me smiling from ear to ear. Everything in this Tevat is so serene. Dragon Spy is an exception in that it's somehow even more so. Wandering around with nothing but snow crunching beneath feet is a surreal experience like the mountain has finally healed from its calamitous past. Uh, this Tevat is a world where nothing is wrong. There are no storms. There is no biting cold. Uh, the Skyfrost Nail is nowhere to be found. Just sunshine and happiness. A world befitting Nilu. It's as if we're once again within her dream. Except, this time, she's not being controlled by a bunch of sketchy sages. Uh, there remains a lot to cover within Nilu's world, and I plan to release additional videos exploring it, so do make sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in sneak peeks or odd tidbits, I often share those over on my Twitter, at Musashiden. This is Musashi, signing off. Till next time.